Hey, this is Trevor at Stone Death, and during this video I will be reviewing Rampant Infantile Strangulation by Umbilical Asphyxia. Umbilical Asphyxia is a two-man slam project formed in 2018 by genre veterans Clayton Mead of Depulsed and Implements of Hell and Larry Wang, the man behind Fat Tubular Records and a handful of other slam bands including Corpora, Guttural Cavernosa, Coprocephalic, Maggot Colony, Gorpot, just, you know, a few off the top of my head. The project sort of just sprung up out of nowhere, I think solely based on the fact that the two members look suspiciously alike. Anyway, their debut full-length album, Rampant Infantile Strangulation, was released in 2018, that same year, so it's a couple years old, and it came out on Brutal Mind. I'd like to also note that this is not the first time I've reviewed this album, although it is the first time that I've done so on video. The first time was back in 2018 when the album came out, when I was still just typing that shit up for Facebook. So we're we're past that. I just thought I'd come all the way around back to it because, well, I fucking gave it another listen the other day and realized that it, it fucking deserves it. So I'm going to give you the rundown on this a second time. First, I'd like to dive into the cover. Art uh, designed by the artist at Motla Art. And uh, it's just a big fat motherfucking Jorah Gumo feasting on some uh, baby parts and shit on the ground. And uh, for those of you who are unfamiliar with the Jorah Gumo, it is a creature from Japanese folklore. The legend goes that it started its life as a golden orb weaver spider, but on its 400th fucking birthday, it suddenly gains magical powers and grows to the size of a cow. Now, among these magical powers, it can transform itself to, do, to look like a beautiful woman. A disguise, if you will. A disguise that it uses to lure in lustful men that it then feeds upon instead of its regular insect diet. Basically, it chows down on horny dudes after seducing them. Funny enough, the name Joragumo, although the modernized characters actually translate to Entangled Bride, originally translates to Whore Spider. Whore Spider. Real fucking nice. Anyway, that's the cover. The real important part of any album, I suppose, is the music, so I guess I'll talk about that for a little bit now. In just a second... All the instrumental bits on this album are all written by Larry. He takes care of all that that uh, that side of, of that. But the both of them, Larry and Clayton, share responsibilities on the mic, which is really neat. But I'll get into more of that in a second. As far as the instruments, Larry takes a pretty comfortable path writing this album with, you know, following the, the pretty standard template for slamming brutal death metal. But in that signature, you know, sporadic, chromatic riff writing and the, the fast over slow slam style that's more akin to the stuff that he has his hand in already, like uh, Corpora Guttural Cavernosa or Maggot Colony, stuff like that. So it's, it's a bit familiar in that sense. This album may have came out in 2018, two years ago, you know, but it still to this day amazes me just a little bit that while Larry is in, you know, a multitude of other projects, he finds time to, you know, just on a whim decide, mm, I'm going to write a 12-track fucking album for shits and gigs. In summation to that fact, there can really be no denying that Larry Wang is a man who knows his slam. The real high point to this album, though, is the vocal performance that the both of them give. Now, the both of them have these really savage sewage pipes that, you know, lend themselves to being paired up, and it's almost no surprise that they would team up and both share responsibilities on the mic just because of that, even though it's not something that's commonly utilized in the genre. You know, there's not a whole lot of slam bands with two vocalists going on at the same time. The result of this unholy union is something truly spectacular. The two play off of each other back and forth and side by side like it was a fucking choreographed dance, interchanging patterns and techniques, creating a wealth of variation and depth with their 
churning and noxious gutturals blended together like a boiling rotten stew of death. In the traditional slam fashion, the album's packed full of gory and over-the-top song titles like Regurgitated for Reconsumption or Enigmatic Depregnated Dumpster Disposal. And of course, a pleasant handful of delightfully disturbing samples, including infants weeping in sorrow and the whimsical tune of an ice cream truck. That's not creepy at all, right? Regardless, rampant infantile strangulation is a blast to listen to from beginning to end. It's fucking catchy, it's brutal, and the two-man vocal assault makes it a unique addition that is also essential to any Slam Addicts collection. That wraps up my review for this album. Make sure that you check it out or else Jorogumo is going to sneak into your room and fucking eat you the next time you're beating off. If you've stuck around this long, then it's time for my album recommendations, the very first of which is Sea of Necrophenomena by Implements of Hell. <laughs> Necrophenomena was released in February of last year by Amputated Vein Records, and although the band was formed in Las Vegas all the way back in 2006, this is their first and debut full-length release. So that's 13 fucking years of waiting around, but it was fucking worth it. Also important to note that this uh, features the vocalist Clayton Mead, who was also on Rampant Infantile Strangulation, one of two. So yeah, check that shit out. Next up is the album Asian Stoned Effect by Gorepot. <laughs> Gorepot is another one of Larry Wang's projects that was formed in 2008. In fact, when it began, it was his solo project that then later evolved into a group. And um, they're typically referred to as something uh, called Mean Slam, but that's due to their comedic approach with their silly samples and their ridiculous song titles like The Flying Gooch Man, Bring Me the Chorizo, and a personal favorite of mine, Wrong Hole to Fuck With. Asian Stone Effect is their latest full-length album, uh, released two years ago, same day as uh, Rampant Infantile Strangulation, in fact, October 31st, a Halloween of 2018. Anyway, that is the end of my review, so I will leave links for all that shit down in the description below, and uh, thank you for watching. Make sure you hit that big fucking red subscribe button. I'd come back next time.